This is the time of year people all over the country start to have problems with seasonal allergic rhinitis, better known as hay fever. We've always thought it was just a nuisance, but it turns out it also degrades cognitive performance, at least a little. Awesome? That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Special thanks to Austin Fract, who wrote the Upshot column from which this week's episode was adapted. Hay fever affects at least 10% of the population and a higher percentage of children. The most obvious signs of allergic response include sneezing, itching, and a runny nose. These can disrupt sleep, leading to fatigue, and the allergy can cause neurocognitive deficits we may not notice in ourselves or in our children. Medications used to treat the allergy can also induce sleepiness in some people. In the United States, school-aged children collectively lose about 2 million school days because of pollen allergies. Even when they attend school, allergy-suffering students may perform a bit worse than their non-allergic counterparts. Using data from Norway, a recent study shows that when pollen levels rise, students' test scores fall. The study used data from nearly 70,000 high school exit exams, which Norwegian students must pass to graduate and are used for higher educational placement. Students take exams at different locations, and each student takes several tests at different times of the year, providing multiple data points per student. The study combined those with pollen count data, linked to the location and time at which each student took each exam, as well as other demographic and air quality data used to control for potentially confounding factors. Pollen counts are measured in grains of pollen per cubic meter of air and can be as high as the hundreds at the height of pollen season in Norway. For students allergic to pollen, the study found that a pollen count increase of 37, large enough to cause symptoms in highly allergic people, is associated with a drop of about one-tenth of a point in exam scores. The scores range from one, worst performance, to six, best performance. Does a seemingly small effect matter in the long run? Other results suggest they do. The study also finds that higher pollen counts correlate with a slightly lower likelihood of enrolling in a university and a lower probability of going into a STEM field. However, though the statistical methods to analyze test scores are rigorous enough to reasonably infer their causal, the ones for these longer term results are less so. Still, the study's author said, and I'm quoting, it would be surprising if there were no effects in the longer run. This is particularly likely in countries where exams are weighed more heavily than in Norway towards entrance to institutions of higher education. There, exams count for only about 15% of entrance determinations. Norway is not the only setting where a pollen exam relationship has been found. In Britain, students take an exit exam at the end of secondary education in the spring or summer, when pollen counts are high. They also take a practice exam the prior winter. Researchers found that compared with those with no allergy symptoms, British students who report allergies or take allergy medications during their secondary education exit exams are 40% to 70% more likely to score a full grade lower than they did on their practice test. A study in the United States found that a doubling of the pollen count is associated with about 1 or 2% drop in the proportion of third graders passing English and math achievement tests. Clinical studies have examined the cognitive effects of hay fever more directly. For example, a study found that people with hay fever experience slower speeds of mental processing during ragweed season than at other times of the year. Another study exposed allergic people to pollen in a controlled setting. It found that they exhibited slower mental function, decreased memory, and poor reasoning and computation abilities compared with non-allergic test subjects. More generally, what we breathe affects how well we perform at school or work. Several studies found a link between air pollution and school absences, as well as labor supply and worker productivity. Worse air quality can cause or worsen respiratory problems, like asthma, reducing some children's ability to attend school and adults' entry into the workforce. It can also harm job performance. One study found that higher concentrations of certain air pollutants hurt test scores of Israeli students and the chances of passing a high school exam necessary for higher education. Individually, we may not be able to do much about air pollution, but we can try to reduce the impact of pollen on school and work performance Finding allergy medication that doesn't induce drowsiness is an obvious approach. When it comes to high-stakes exams, it may be worth choosing test dates outside the allergy season if possible. Hay fever is rarely debilitating, but its small effects can put us off our best game. Healthcare Triage is funded in part by viewers like you through Patreon, a service that allows you to support the show through a monthly donation. Your support makes this show bigger and better. 
We'd especially like to thank Joe Sevitz and Sam. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Sam. More information can be found at patreon.com slash healthcare triage.